How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our next topic, which is going to be VXLAN external connections. Now, essentially what this means is that we're going to allow remote sites or even on the local site to access the VXLAN attached devices. Now, there's a number of ways that we can do this, and we are going to take a look at multiple ways of trying to execute this, but essentially what we're going to do the first round is connecting the VXLAN fabric to a private WAN of some type. So you and I are actually going to, in this video are going to deploy an MPLS layer three VPN and get it fully working. And um, we're not going to peer to the we're not going to set up the eBGP peerings from the leaf switches, also known as the border leaves. We're not going to do any those connections right now. We're just going to do the MPLS Layer 3 VPN setup. And then in the next video, we're going to do the actual external connection setup. And then we're going to do the verification piece of that, do the, the pings and the, the trace routes and all that type of stuff to see exactly what that flow looks like. Because understanding how the setup comes into play is super important here. So essentially, the MPLS Layer 3 VPN is going to be like any other MPLS Layer 3 VPN you might be familiar with. Where we're going to do OSPF and set up uh, all the specifics on that. So OSPF LDP, set up BGP in a full mesh design, and then we're going to configure create VRFs, but we're not going to apply them to the interfaces. We'll take care of that when we go do the, the eBGP peerings from the leaf switches that we're going to peer to, as well as the the testing in the next video. So we're just going to get the layer 3 VPN piece configured. It shouldn't take us more than 10 or 15 minutes to do all that. Well, minus the IP addressing. So um, that'll be another couple of minutes to go through. But essentially, that's what we're going to be setting up in this video is the layer 3 VPN. And then in the next video, we'll go through and do the external peerings and stuff like that, because we're going to have to tie in the inter AS option so if you've, um, if you've ever dealt with MPLS Layer 3 VPN and you've ever been curious to say on how, for example, how does provider A and provider B peer with each other to get connectivity from customer A to customer B or customer A site 1 to customer uh, A site 2, but the providers aren't internet and don't have the, the reach to get to both. You know, you have to provider A and provider B have to peer with each other in order to make that happen. And we'll talk about how inter-AS option A or back-to-back -back VRFs work and stuff like that so that we can understand how this stuff comes into play and how the routing information is propagated and things like that. So quite a bit of initial configuration is going to be necessary and it's going to be easier to break it up on the specifics than it would be to do one big video. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the config that is necessary. So, oh, and as a side note, um, I rebooted Nexus 9K1, and Nexus 9K1 is now back online. If we were to do a, a show VPC, the VPC is back online, show BGP, layer 2 VPN, eVPN. That's working now, and PC13 is able to reach the, um, the internet, and the pings are working effectively here. And ASA11 is doing just fine with the show failover, Everything's looking pretty good there. As you can see, there's lots of propagation happening here with the information being sent. Just wanted to level set on that considering there was some issues in the previous video that we were dealing with. So what we're gonna do is we're going to essentially take the, the routing information here and we're going to form OSPF peerings between these guys and here and here and all that good stuff. And then we're going to form BGP peerings between all these guys. We're not, we don't have a route reflector in the design, so we're not gonna worry about a route reflector. Um, but just a full mesh of peerings should be more than sufficient. That'll be the, um, that'll get us OSPF and LDP deployed. That'll get us our IBGP VPN V4 squared away. We're going to create the VRFs and 
configure all the information that needs to be associated with them. And in the next video, we're going to do the the per subinterface connections here. We're going to actually have two connections, one for each customer. So we're going to have two total customers that we're going to be deploying. So we're going to have uh, C1 and C2 as our customer VRFs, and we're going to apply them underneath the subinterfaces with specific VLAN IDs that we're going to associate to that. And then PC1 is actually a router, and this interface right here is going to be carved up into multiple subinterfaces to allow us to take a look at specific details of how the traffic is coming in and all that good stuff. So we'll take a look at that in more detail once we get to that particular uh, portion of the setup. But over here on PE1, let's go ahead and host name is going to be PE1. And we're going to go to interface gig 0 slash 0, no shut it. IP address here will be 10.1.1 slash uh, 24. And interface loopback 0, IP address here will be 1.1.1.1 slash 32. And then I'm going to go router OSPF1. And then I'm going to type in, um, it's probably easier just to go to the interface level and do the interface gig 0 slash 0 and type in IP OSPF1 area 0 and interface loopback 0 and do that and then router OSPF 1 and type in MPLS LDP auto config and then just wash rinse and repeat on the rest of the devices PE2 same thing we're going to go up to host name is going to be PE2 interface gig 0 slash 0 no shut I'm going to go to router OSPF1, MPLS LDP auto config, and then we're going to go ahead and type in the interface loopback 0, IP address here will be 1.1.1.2 slash 32, IP OSPF1 area 0, and interface gig 0 slash 0, IP address of 10.1.2.2 slash 24. And IP OSPF1 area 0. That's that. PE3, uh, PE same thing. I'm going to do host name is going to be PE3. Interface gig 0 slash gig 0 slash 0. No shut. IP address here will be 10.1.3.3 slash 24. And IP OSPF1 area 0. Interface loopback 0. We'll do a IP address of 1.1.1.3 slash 32. IP OSPF 1 area 0 and then router OSPF 1. And we'll do MPLS LDP auto config. And then now to tie it all together on P1, we're going to go to host name is going to be P1 for provider router. Interface loopback 0, IP address here will be 1.1.1.11 slash 32 IP OSPF 1 area 0 and that interface gig 0 slash 0 IP address here will be 10.1.1.11 slash 24 no shut and then IP OSPF 1 area 0 interface gig 0 slash 1 IP address here will be 10.1.2.11 slash 24 IP OSPF 1 area 0 and then we're going to do interface gig 0 slash 2 and we'll specify that do show IP interface brief that I know shut I did not interface gig 0 slash 1 no shut interface gig 0 slash 2 no shut IP address here will be 10.1.3.11 slash 24 and then IP OSPF 1 area 0 and then router OSPF 1 MPLS LDP auto config now, the one thing about LDP autoconfig that comes in here, why I'm using that, is very simple. When you use this command right here, what you're basically doing is applying this to the, underneath the routing process, you're automatically going to enable LDP on any of the interfaces running OSPF. So if you do show IP OSPF interface brief, we're going to see that all these interfaces are currently running OSPF. So we want to form an LDP peering with each one of them. 
and because PE1, PE2, and PE3 are also configured for that, and we're mutually exchanging information, we're going to be good to go in that particular case. So that's how you do the OSPF and LDP process. It gets pretty easy to configure in that particular case. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is on PE1, I'm going to go ahead and configure him for BGP. To do this, we're going to do router BGP 65100. And we're typing no BGP default IPv4 unicast, which means we are not going to form a IPv4 unicast peering to all the other routers by default. We're going to have to manually define the address families that we want to connect to. So what I'm going to do here is type in neighbor of 1.1.2 remote AS of 65100. The update source will be loopback 0. And then I'm also going to do 1.3. And the up and updates uh, the update sources will be loop back zero. And I'm going to type in address family VPN before unicast, and I'm going to go ahead and for this guy here I'm going to go ahead and activate, and for two I'm going to activate. Now this is actually a very very easy config. That's literally the extent of our our syntax. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is do show run section BGP, and I can just take Notepad real quick and make a couple of quick adjustments to the deployment. So we've got this config here. I'm literally just going to take this, the syntax like this and dump it in here and I'm going to go to PE2. Now because I'm on PE2 I'm going to, for any of the interfaces that I configured or uh, the neighbor statements I configured for from PE1 to point to PE2 I'm just going to swap these out to be the twos to be ones. Something simple like that. I'm going to copy and paste this into PE2, like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on PE3. Bring this down a little bit, PE3. And for PE3, it appeared to PE2, same thing. Something sim very simple like that. And just like that. Copy, paste this into PE3, hit the Enter key, right click and paste. And then we're going to get some BGP peerings up here momentarily. and we'll be able to form the peerings like so. That shouldn't take very long at all, and there they are. So do show BGP B, BPN before unicast all summary, and I have peerings to both, which is exactly what I want. Now, the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is create the VRFs. So I'm gonna create the VRFs on PE1 and just copy and paste them into PE2 and 3. So the way I'm gonna do this here is gonna be VRF definition to do both IPv4 and IPv6 connections. I'm going to do C1 for customer one. The RD in this case here will be, uh, I'm going to put in here, um, this will be, if we do, do look at the configuration here, we're going to do a setup of the customer number and the local autonomous system. So in this case here, it's going to be uh, customer one colon 65100 is what I'm going to specify it as. Then the route target for both. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to put in here the association number is going to be 1 colon 65100. And now address family IPv4 unicast. Now let me kind of break down the, the config for this. So do show run pipe section VRF. And basically what I'm doing here, give that a second to pull up. When you're configuring it like this, and you put the route distinguisher in here, the route distinguisher is going to be a 64 bit value that gets associated the beginning of any IP addresses that are learned in from a customer. What that's going to do is it's going to make those routes globally unique per customer. So because you could have a, a customer one that's running the 10 slash 8 address everywhere, customer two same thing, customer three same thing. So if you've got 10 slash 8 being used by all your customers, there's nothing, you, there's nothing unique. So you use the route distinguisher to do that. Route distinguisher gets added at the beginning and it makes it very, very easy to work with. The route target when you're deploying it outside of an address family means that you're going to use both route targets 1 colon 65100 for both address family v4 and v6. We're only going to be deploying v4 in this design, but that's basically where this comes into play. So now I get to go ahead and exit out of here and type in VRF definition C2. RD is going to be 2 colon 65100. 
the route target both will be 2 colon 65 100 and then address family IPv4 unicast as you can see the config is pretty easy right do show run do show run pipe section VRF give that a couple of seconds to pull up and I'm literally just going to copy and paste this stuff out and apply it to PC or PE2 and PE3 just like that PE3 just like that now when we get to the next video and we start doing our EBGB peerings between PE1 and Nexus 9K3 and PE2 and Nexus 9K5 and we start getting all this stuff working then we're going to be able to take this to the next level then we're going to get the peerings up these gig01 and e1/7 will actually be configured with subinterfaces and VRFs so we'll have to create VRFs on 9K3 and 9K5 and associate those to the interfaces and allow the peerings to happen the way that they're supposed to and all that good stuff that goes along with that. That's why I'm breaking it up into two different videos. So this configuration is pretty straightforward. And then PC1 will basically be a, I just say, a node that will be used to peer or test connectivity. So we'll do some ping tests to make sure that everything's working the way that it's supposed to be. And then once that's in play, that'll make it that much easier to work with. So PC1 will have a subinterface configured here. Gig00 will have two subinterfaces created, and then this will have two different VRFs on it, and we'll see VRF aware routing coming into play with BGP. So we'll be able to jump into whatever device we need to, and I'll whiteboard this out a little bit more in detail, but that's basically what we're going to be doing. So hopefully that makes sense as we go along. I'm hoping the config will kind of, as we work through it, you'll be like, oh, I see what he's doing. And then I'll whiteboard it out a little bit more when we're doing our verification in the next video. Until that time, thanks so much for stopping by, everyone, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.